Today on Handy Dad TV, I'm gonna show you how I installed a Tesla wall connector, which is a permanently hardwired charger so that I could charge my Tesla Model Y while I'm at home. Coming up. Now, full disclosure, I did not pay for this wall connector, but I didn't get it for free. I got it thanks to people who click on my link when they wanna buy a Tesla of their own. So if that's you and you haven't bought one yet, click the link in the video description when you go to make your order and give me a few points that I can buy Tesla merchandise with. Thanks. All right, the Tesla wall connector is a permanently installed charger. It's recommended for any Tesla owner and, uh, and it's increasingly the standard that's gonna be used for uh, North America, so all vehicles are going to come with this type of a charger uh, plug. And it's really straightforward. It just needs two conductor wire. That's the, probably the most confusing and, and hardest thing. It comes with this pamphlet that shows you the various different ways to install it. And uh, you, can, you can have it flush to a wall so the wire comes in through the back or you can have it so that the wire comes in from the top or the bottom. And that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm actually gonna bring the wire in from the top. Mine's gonna be surface mounted over there next to the garage door. The number one question people ask on electrical projects is what wire should I use? If you already know the answer for this project, then skip ahead to the time shown below. Otherwise, let's take a look at page six of the manual for those details. First, at the very top, the manual says you should use a 60 amp breaker for maximum output. It also states the wall connector has built-in GFCI shock protection, so you must not use a GFCI breaker. Just an ordinary double pole breaker will do, but of course it needs to be the right type for your circuit panel. Now you don't need to use a 60 amp breaker. There's a chart on the page that shows all the supported breaker sizes and the maximum output for each of those breakers which is always 20% less than the breaker rating for safety. I'm gonna use a 60 amp breaker, so I can expect a maximum charge rate of 48 amps or 11.5 kilowatts. Now further down under the heading of branch circuit conductors is where they talk about wire size. The manual says, if installing less than the maximum power, meaning less than a 60 amp breaker, refer to your local electric code to select the correct conductors. If installing for maximum power, Use minimum 6 AWG 90 degrees Celsius copper wire for conductors. Below that, there's a note, upsize conductors if necessary. If you're not sure what all this means, you really need to consult an electrician, which I am not. Essentially, it means you can use 6 gauge wire for short runs. Longer runs have increased resistance, which generates heat and causes voltage drop. So depending on the length of your run, you may need to upsize your wire accordingly. Now please don't ask me to size your wire. I'm not an electrician and I can't accept the liability. I'm just showing you what the manual says and what I'm doing. There are a few more important points before we leave this page. First, they reiterate that the wall connector uses copper wire only. You cannot use aluminum wire anywhere on that circuit. Second, if you're installing the wall connector outdoors, you need to use watertight fittings, which I'm not showing in this video, so you'll have to find a different video for that. And third, in the middle of the page, it says external disconnect switches are neither required nor recommended. I've seen plenty of melted disconnects on the interwebs. So if Tesla says don't use one, don't. Once you know the correct wire size, you need to decide which wire type to use. So if you're going to run them in the wall, if that's possible for you, then you can use something like this, which is a jacketed cable. This is Romax cable, okay? It's got two conductors plus a ground in this cable. All right, this cannot be left exposed. It has to be in a wall. And that's only if your jurisdiction allows you to use Romax. Some of them do not. If you're gonna surface mount it like I am, you could use, this is THHN wire. And this has to be protected in conduit. It's, it's single wire, this is stranded. In fact, in every case here, it's copper wire, but it's stranded. Um, you can use that, run two of these, and that's two hots, plus you need a ground. You can use a ground cable if you wanna go with conduit. If you wanna avoid conduit altogether, but you wanna protect your wire, you can use, this is MC cable, this is called um, metal clad, that's what MC stands for. And you can see, 
It's the same six gauge wire, just like the other stuff, but it's enclosed in this metal. And that is the easiest installation. It just means it's gonna be visible. So that's what I'm gonna use. I was originally gonna do conduit, but then I realized, you know what? It's an awful lot easier to just use the MC cable. So that's what I'm going with now. Now, if you've never been inside your electric panel, uh, this is not the first electrical project I would suggest you do. I would suggest you call an electrician. But in my situation, I've got this, uh, this breaker right here that is a 30 amp breaker and it has nothing connected to it. It was labeled for backroom heat. I think that was gonna be for a mini split by the previous owner when they built an addition and they never implemented it. So I'm gonna use that one for my 60 amp breaker. And then I've got this, the MC cable here is gonna run, I've already got a hole down there and I'm going to bring it out of the bottom of the box, out that hole, up the corner, around up top here, and down into the wall connector up here. And I want it, it's going to be higher than normal because I've got my workbench here. This workbench is going to get pushed against this wall. And so, uh, and it can't go too close to that breaker panel because I can't get the door open. So I have to have it flush here as much as possible, and that's how I determined my placement. So I've stretched out the MC cable here, and uh, it is long enough. I got 25 feet. It's plenty for what I'm doing. All right, comes with a template for driving the, uh, the mounting plate and attaching it to a stud. It comes with the screws that are necessary. And the mounting plate just pulls off like that. So this mounting plate serves a couple of purposes. First and foremost, it's what attaches to the wall to hold the wall connector on. Then it is also the wiring device. So this is where the cable is going to come in, go around, and come in here. There's three, two conductors plus ground. That's what I need to use here. These just pop out. There's like a rubber gasket in here. Yeah, you pop that out, and that's how the, uh, the cable's going to fit in there. Now, using the template, I'm going to hold it up right about here. And this is my, my little, uh, <laughs> it's a little magnet. It's just telling me where the, uh, the stud is. And so I could put it centered on the stud, but because I want to clamp the wire and the clamp hangs to the side, I'm actually going to mount it this way. So I'm going to use the right two holes, and then that way I can use the clamp on the wire. Even comes with the screws that go in there. Now before you put the flex end on it, you definitely want to put on one of these bushings. They fit over that and into the conduit here. And they will prevent this from rubbing against the, the metal. So that's going to be that. And that's going to go like that. And then I'm going to clamp, tighten that down. All right, I have this good and tight on here, and that plastic bushing is in there to keep it from fraying the wires. The only problem is that the hole in the end of the mounting plate is three quarter inch, and this is half inch. So what I'm gonna do is I actually have a, a bigger three quarter inch flex connector. I'm gonna clamp this around that one, and just the way it's gonna be. It's gonna protect the wire. That's what the whole point is. It's gotta protect the wire. So if you guys have a different solution for this, let me know. Okay, there is a strip gauge right here that shows how long to strip the wires. The ground wire is the green one. That's gonna go in here. And then the other two are for 
the other two conductors. Now mine happen to be black and white. Now white is typically neutral. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to redesignate this as a hot wire. And to do that, I just need to either take a marker and color this or wrap it with non-white tape. So I have black electrical tape. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap it in that and uh, that's all it'll take. Now there is also a little, little notch right here or a little tab that is for this zip tie. I have to put it through there and that's going to hold the wires nice and tight. Now you'll notice when I'm putting these in, I tighten them and then I wiggle the wire and then I tighten them again. And that's always the best practice. Now I'm also not using a torque screwdriver. It's a long story, but I couldn't find it at the time that I installed this, but I'll correct that at the end of the video. Beautiful. All right, at this point, the wall connector is in and my cable comes down the wall here and it's gonna go in this hole down the bottom and I'm gonna bring it up through here and so I measured the length and I cut the cable to length and I did that with a hacksaw very carefully. You can actually do that with a hacksaw, but uh, you really have to be careful not to nick the wires. I put another bushing in there or another one of those grommets in there. And then this is gonna go on here and I'm gonna feed that up through the wall. This knockout here is the size that it needs to be. So that's where it's gonna come up right there. Of course, my sheetrock is in the way. Oh, that's not very good. That's probably not gonna fit there. I may have to go with one over here and put a cap in there. I may have to use this one here in the middle. Oh well, okay, live and learn. I'll move it. And then what I'm gonna do is turn all the power off to the, the panel because I'm not gonna feed wires up here with a live panel. Now to turn off all power, you don't just throw the main breaker. You start by turning off all the branch circuits one after another, and then when all those are off, then you throw the main breaker. Now the entire panel is dead, except for the two lugs at the top, which is where the power feeds in from the meter. I don't show it here, but the green wire has to get connected to the ground bus, which is not visible from this angle. Don't forget to wiggle after you tighten, and then retighten them again. Now, 
Now to turn the panel back on, the first thing I do is turn on the main breaker and then each one of the branch circuits one at a time until they're all on. And that odd breaker down at the bottom is incoming from the solar system, by the way. I'm connected on the Wi-Fi, and I'm sitting here waiting for this app or whatever, this website that it broadcasts to come back. It's thinking. Alrighty, it seems I I got it to work by using the fully qualified slash installation. That's what I needed to do to get it to work. And here I am, United States 60 amp breaker. I'm going to save that. You can see I've got green lights. And my Wi-Fi is currently disabled. I'm going to enable it. Alright, I'm going to put it on my IoT network. All right, a few minutes later, it now says it's connected to the internet and to Tesla. And I've got my MAC address and my IP address here, and so now I can see if it'll charge the car. Well, I heard the click. I got green. Tesla app shows it is charging at 48 amps. I don't know if you could see that, but... It says 48 amps. Now, I don't like to charge that fast, but we're going to burn it in. We're going to see. Things certainly have changed a little bit in the garage since I installed the wall connector a few weeks ago. I finally have everything unpacked, and that enabled me to find my torque screwdriver, which was missing when I did the initial install. So now what I'm going to do is open it back up and make sure that I torque it down correctly. Should have been done originally, but, you know, better late than never. This is a very inexpensive torque screwdriver that uh, I got on Amazon. They say it's digital, but it's really not digital. I have it set to 50 inch pounds, which is what is required by the wall connector. It has a quarter inch socket up there and it comes with a whole bunch of different kinds of bits. But I'm going to use the one that came with the wall connector. Put that in and let's see if we torque this. See, it does take a lot of force. You'd be surprised what 50 inch pounds really is so <laughs> let me see if I use two hands here okay and when it clicks that means it's good and then wiggle and do it again okay good good all right, I know everything is good. I'm just gonna put it back up, stick it in, and then put the security screws back in it too. All right, with the panel open, this is the circuit that goes to the wall connector, the circuit breaker. And it says that it wants to be 45 inch pounds is the torque spec for this breaker. So I've adjusted my torque screwdriver to 45, and I'm gonna carefully test this one too. Typically they say not to tighten a breaker while it's installed because you don't want to bend anything or break any of the plastic. But because this one is held in place with the other breakers, I didn't worry about it. And it is absolutely tight enough. And I wiggled the wires, tightened them again, everything's good. I'll put links to the wall connector, the installation guide, and all the supplies that I bought to do the installation down in the video description. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Hey there, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be the first to know when new videos are posted. Look for Handy Dad TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit the website handydad.tv for more great ideas and information.